Welcome to Bismart Together. I mainly focus on Power Query and Excel. If you're new, please subscribe and turn on the notification. Also, feel free to drop a comment to give feedback, ask questions or let me know if there are any topics you're interested in. Today, I want to show you how some basic text value manipulation techniques and value extraction. Here are the three sample data I will be using in this video. I covered the mCode method for creating a calendar, and I want to show you the pivot table way before we start the date intelligence functions. Go to the design tab. There is a calendar section, and the date table is what you need. From the drop down menu, select new. There you go. A calendar is generated. This calendar can only be used in Power Pivot or as a pivot table in Excel. You can go to the date table and select the update range to update the date range. From the pop up window, update the date range. We're not updating it in our case. Let's add an additional column and name it day. Use the day function to get the day from the date column. In Australia, the financial year starts on the 1st of July and ends on the 30th of June, so we need a column for the financial year. The logic is if the column, a month number is less than 7. Then we want the result to start with FY, use the write function to extract the year number and minus 1 to get the previous number, and follow by a slash, and the last two digits of the current year number. Otherwise, we want the result to start with FY, followed by the last two digits of the current year number, a slash, and use the write function to extract the current year number minus 1 to get the previous year number. Go to the diagram view to link the calendar table to the sample data table. Then return to the data view and go to the sales table. So we can start writing DAX. Let's create a measure for sales using the SUMX function. The first date intelligence function I want to show you is date YTD. Start the measure with the calculate function. Select sales for the first argument and use the date YTD function for the second argument. There is one mandatory argument and an optional argument. Use the date column from the calendar table we created. Please do not use the date from the sales table because we need a complete date and otherwise the YTD calculation may be incorrect. We will go through the outcome after we create all the measures. The next date intelligence function is total YTD. You can use the function by itself, consisting of two mandatory and two optional arguments. Use the sales for the first argument and the date column from the calendar table for the second argument. The year and date defaults to the 31st of December, and please change it to the 30th of June because it is the financial year and date in Australia. Let us create a few variables before the next function. The first variable is to get today's date with the today function. The second variable is to get the current month number with the month function. The third variable is to get today's day with the day function. The last variable is to get the current year with the year function. Let me show you another great method. Let's create a measure starting with the calculate function. Use the total YTD calculation for the first argument. With the second argument, we want to use the filter function to filter the calendar table for the month number equal to and less than the current month number, and the day is equal to and less than today's day. This method allows you to get the year-to-date sales to the same month and day for current and previous years. The second last measure is the parallel period. We want to use the total YTD function and sales for the first argument. The second argument requirement is dates, so we use the parallel period function here. This function consists of three arguments, a dates, number of intervals and interval. If the requirement is dates, we use the date column from the calendar table. The second argument, the number of intervals is negative one because we want last year. If without the negative sign, it means next year. The third argument, the interval is year because we want last year. You can use month or quarter for last month or last quarter. We use the same period last year function for our last measure. 
Again, we start with the total YTD function and use sales measure for the first argument. We are using the same period last year function in the second argument, and it is only one argument, a dates, which have to be the dates column from the calendar table. Now it is time to review our measures in Excel. Expand the calendar field. We want to add the financial year column, followed by the month column. Then go to the sales table and add the sales, dates YTD, total YTD, previous year YTD, parallel period and same period last year measures. The sum of sales represents the total sales by month and we want to use it to aid with the understanding of other measures. Let's go through our first measure, dates YTD. The dates YTD return a year-to-date dates table and it has the flexibility and needs to be used in combination with other functions. In our case, it is the aggregation function. If you go through the sales from July to September, the sales in July represent the first month of the financial year, and it starts to accumulate the sales from August, and the September sales are the year to date from July to September. Let's move over to the total YTD measure. The result is the same if you look at the result compared to the dates YTD measure. However, the total YTD function can be used to calculate the year to date directly, and the syntax is simpler. Whereas, with the dates YTD function, you need the calculate function. The next measure is a customized year-to-date sales measure. This measure returns the YTD sales only up to today's day for current and previous years as a total. There are times that you need a measure only to return a total, and this is one of the methods to achieve it. You may realize that there are sales amounts that appear in other months as it is because the filter criteria a month number that conflicts with the financial year timing. Let's quickly update the criteria in Power Pivot. Add a new column in the calendar table and name it period. We need a conditional statement if the month number is before July, then the month number plus six. Otherwise, the month number minus six. Now go to the sales table, add another variable and name it period. We need to write the same conditional statement as we wrote in the period column. Then go to the measure, update the highlighted code to the correct one and return to Excel. You now should only see one total YTD for each financial year. The second last measure is the parallel period measure. The parallel period function is common uses for obtaining a parallel period in the past or future. A result returns the last year's YTD, and it will work if your year end is on the 31st of December, but not for other timing. To make it works, we need to change the number of intervals to minus 12 and interval to month. After you update the function, you should get the proper result. The last measure uses the same period last year function. As per the function name, you only get last year same period, whereas parallel period is much more flexible and both require need the total YTD or the calculate functions. I hope this video provides you with a good knowledge of when and how to use those functions. Thank you for watching and I hope you find this video helpful. Please don't forget to click like if you like the video.